Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to use a web-based weather API to pull current weather data into your Microsoft Access database. This is going to be both an expert and a developer video. I'm going to show you the expert way first that doesn't require any programming. Then I'm going to show you a developer method using an API call that is a lot more powerful and you can get data results like this very easily. What is an API? It's an application programming interface. That's simply a fancy way of saying you can ask somebody else to do something for you. Like a Win API, you can ask Windows to do something or give you some information. A web-based API is a web server that you can say, hey, give me some information. Like, what's the current temperature? So that's really all an API does. And there's tons of, there's millions of. All right, today's question comes from Jeffrey in Linwood, Washington, one of my silver members and an Access Expert student. Jeffrey says, I'm taking your Access Expert 24 class, and in there you give a link to an RSS weather feed from Weather Underground. That feed no longer exists. Are there any other sites that you can recommend that still work? Yes, Jeffrey. Unfortunately, that class is about seven years old, and as always when dealing with websites, they come and go, they change things. So unfortunately, Weather Underground's API doesn't work anymore, but a quick little Google search shows AccuWeather has an API and you just send it your zip code and it will tell you the weather conditions. And you can do pretty much exactly what I show in that video and let me walk you through it real quick. So take any database, this is my tech help free template. You can grab a copy of this off my website if you want to and copy that URL that I gave you to your clipboard so this guy, right? Yeah, it's a PowerPoint slide. Let me copy that. Copy. Control C. And now in Access, we're going to go to External Data, New Data, From File, and then pick XML File. I know it's a URL. It's not a file, but just pick XML File. Now you're going to paste that URL in here. Change your zip code, obviously, to whatever you want. If you're out of the U.S., I'm not exactly sure what you do. There's instructions on their website. Hit OK. Now it's going to go out, it's going to find this table with some other stuff in it. You want to make sure you import the structure and the data. Hit OK. All right, save the import steps if you want. I've got whole separate videos on saving import steps and, and doing imports in general. All right, now you're going to get some tables imported over here. There's channel, there's image. What you're looking for is item right here. And there's your data. All right, there you go. Currently it's cloudy and 79 degrees. There's some links in here to give you, you know, direct links to that stuff. Uh, there's a description right here. All right, so you can pull this stuff out of this table just like you would any normal uh, data. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about this, I cover it in a lot more detail in my Access Expert Level 24 class. It's all the same from this point. It's just the URL is different from the one that I use in this class. I also cover other things like setting up an SQL Server database online. So there's all kinds of cool stuff covered in this. I'll put a link to it down below. Now, this is the lesson for those of you who aren't programmers and don't want to learn VBA, but there's a more powerful method if you use a little bit of VBA. Now, if you've never done any VBA programming before and you want to learn, this video will get you started. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know. After that, go watch my web API video. This teaches you how the code works that can have access go out to the internet, connect to an API server, and bring back some information. In this particular video, I show you how to get the current date and time from an internet time server. And it'll just bring back the current date and time, and that will prevent your users from like, you know, changing the system clock on their computer to act like they, you know, logged into work an hour earlier, okay? Okay, so go watch this. And also, go watch my find between video. I build something called the find between function. Basically, when these internet servers give you data, they're gonna give you a whole bunch of stuff all kinds of stuff formatted really weird and we can use my find between function to very easily pull out a bit of information right like right here we can very easily pull out the timestamp okay or the you know the date using the find between so go watch these these are all free videos they're on my website they're on my youtube channel go watch those then come on back okay now on my website i am going to use the database that we built in the web api video because it's got all the code that we need to connect to the web api service we just have to change the url right instead of getting the current date and time we're going to grab the um the weather from 
the Open Weather Map website. So I'm going to come down here on the member section. I happen to be a gold member on my own website, so I can download this. All right, so here's that database, and it's pretty simple. You hit Get Current Time, and it gets the current time. It goes out to the web server. Now, this one is pretty straightforward. Here's a Get Time mod that we built in the other video. Okay, Get UTC Time, and it just literally goes to this web page and pulls in the information. Here's all the code that you need. Okay, now, the Weather API from Open Weather Map is a little more involved, and you have to get something called an API key. Basically, you have to register. It's free, don't panic, but you have to sign up with your name and email address, and they'll give you a key that you can then use to request information. And they do that to prevent abuse. I think they give you like a thousand free calls a day, which is more than generous, okay? There's what, 14, 40 minutes in a day, so you could make a call every two minutes and be fine, okay? Um, let's go sign up for that first. Let me show you how to do that. All right, their website is at openweathermap.org. Here's their sign up page, and I'll put links to all this stuff down below. Put in a username, email, password, repeat the password. All this stuff, you gotta be 16 years or older, agree to their terms, hit the little thing here, and then go create account. Once you verify your email address and all that good stuff, you're gonna log in, sign in successfully, then come over here and go to My API Keys. When you create an account, you'll be given a default API key. You can also create your own. I created one called Weather. You just type in a name over here, like well, I typed in Weather, hit Create or Generate, and it will give you a new key. It's a, not a super long code here. And yes, I blacked mine out. You cannot have mine make your own. They're free. Once you get an API key, copy it to your clipboard. We'll use it in just a few minutes. Now, I will say that it took about 10 to 15 minutes between the time that I signed up and got my API key until it worked on their server. So it's not immediate, but it doesn't take long. So just wait a few minutes and it'll start working. All right, so paste your API key into Notepad. And here's an example of the URL that you have to use to get data. I'm going to paste that in there as well. It looks like this. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay, here's what the... URL looks like that you have to go to. And you can just put this in your browser. I'll put a copy of this down below so you can just copy and paste it. Here's the URL right out to about there. The question mark says here's where the parameters start, right? So I've got Q equals Cape Coral, Florida, USA. That's your location. It's pretty good about, you know, a wide variety of location formats. Then I specified at units equals imperial because the default for temperature is Kelvin. How very sciencey of them, right? You can also switch it to Celsius, but I'm I'm in I'm in America, so we're still using the Fahrenheit, so that's Imperial, okay? And then app ID equals this is where your application your API key goes. You put that right there. Don't use mine, okay? Now you could take this whole thing and copy this and paste it right into your web browser, and you'll get something that looks like this. Now this is a JSON response. JSON is a particular data format that's that's increasingly becoming the standard on the web. JSON can be a little difficult to parse information out of. I personally prefer XML if it's available and with this particular API, it is available. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm going to add at mode equals XML. If you want, all right, that's, that's up to you. So again, now I'm gonna copy this whole thing, drop it in my web browser. And now you get this guy. This is an XML formatted version of the same stuff. This is just easier to pull data out of because now if you look at this, you can see here's the temperature value equals. So really what we're looking for is this. I want to find everything between, get, get out of here. Everything between temperature value equals quote and then the next quote. And we can use my find between function to very easily do this. We're gonna get this information into access and then just use find between. We can also pull out the feels like values right there. The humidity, the pressure, the wind speed, all this stuff, right? What's the location name? Just to make sure you got the right spot, right? All right, so now we know where to get the data from. We've got our account set up. We got our API key. We can get the data in the web browser. In tomorrow's video, now we're gonna put it all together and use the API code that we built in the web API video to get that information, put it inside of our database, parse all the information out, and your end result will look something like this. We'll do that in tomorrow's class.
So, tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel, you know the drill. If you remember, you can watch it right now, because I'm going to keep recording right now. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. 
Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my Code Vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.